Hi everyone, and welcome back to Planting for Wildlife. It's nearly May, although you wouldn't tell it from the weather. It's still really quite cold here, and we've had torrential rain all through the night. It's also really windy, and you might be able to hear a bit of the roar of the birch trees behind you, so hopefully it's not too loud on the audio. Today though, we're looking at hostas, and hostas are definitely a plant which enjoy those cooler conditions and the damp weather. I have around 44 different types of hostas. I've developed a little bit of an obsession over the years. Although, because I'm not too great at labeling my plants, I couldn't swear to you that I'd be able to tell them all apart. My love for hostas, a little bit like my love for roses, started back in 2019 when I visited the Chelsea Flower Show. There's a company there called Sienna Hosta, and they always have an absolutely stunning display of hostas. I think they win the gold medal pretty much every year, and I can see why. Over the years, I've grown most of my hostas in pots, which works really well being able to move them from garden to garden, but also to move them around the garden to find those shady spots that they really like. Growing them in pots also keeps them nice and high and out of the way of the slugs and snails, although I'm not too precious about them getting a bit eaten. In this garden though, I am planting quite a few out, mainly into the birch grove area, and I'm trying to choose the larger varieties which are gonna hold their own and not get too eaten by the slugs and snails. Hostas come in a range of sizes, all the way from miniature, a little bit like this one, which is called Blue Mouses. I absolutely love this plant. For the beautiful blue color, it's just really cute and also has really nice flowers in the summer too. All the way to giants like Jurassic Park. In this video though, I'm looking at my top five medium-sized hostas, which aren't gonna take up a huge amount of space in your garden, but have enough size to them so that when that beautiful foliage starts to emerge from April into May, they have a nice impact into your garden. But what benefit do hostas have to wildlife? Well, to start with, they're infamous for having their beautiful foliage eaten by snails and slugs. And snails and slugs make great snacks for small mammals like frogs, hedgehogs and toads. They're also eaten by larger garden birds as well, like blackbirds and thrushes. We have a beautiful song thrush in this garden, and whilst I'm not sure it's solely because of my hosta collection, it can't hurt. Hostas also create a haven for beneficial insects like lacewings and ladybugs, which are both really good predators of aphids. Although people don't focus that much on the flowers of hostas, they do have beautiful flowers in the summer, and mine are always really popular with the bees and other pollinators. Apparently, there's one hosta called Hosta lancifolia, which is actually really popular with hummingbirds in certain parts of the world. I'm definitely not gonna see any hummingbirds on my hostas here in the UK, but if anyone has ever seen this, definitely let me know. On to my top five hostas, and I'm gonna start with one called Dragon Warrior. To be honest, the name alone is enough to sell this plant to me, but the name really matches the plant nicely with its long sword-shaped leaves with a nice white margin. The plant doesn't get too tall, although it does spread quite nicely. It's on the smaller size for a medium-sized hosta though, so I'm probably gonna keep mine in a pot rather than planting it out into the bed. The flowers also have red stems, which is a really nice feature. Next up, a really nice blue variety called El Nino. It's one that I've got here, and as you can see, the leaves have a really nice blue hue to them with a kind of cream margin. That cream margin really pops, especially later into the evening when the light's fading. The plant's meant to get to 45 centimeters tall, although as you can see, mine's quite a lot smaller. I think that's because it's been in a small pot for a number of years now, so I'm probably gonna try and plant it out into the bed to see if I can get a little bit more growth out of it. Next up, I have a variety called One Man's Treasure, and this has been one of my standout hostas of this year. I really love this plant. As you can see, it's got beautiful dark green foliage, but one of the things I love about it is that that dark green foliage kind of bleeds into the purple stems, and the stems themselves have got really beautiful patterning to them. If I hold that up and rotate it a bit, you can probably see there um, some of the patterning in the stems. It's a really stunning plant. It's meant to be resistant to slugs and snails, and I can definitely attest to that, given that this one is completely unblemished, and it's been in leaf now for well over six weeks. So this really is one of my top hostas. Next up, I have a variety called Catherine that has really nice striped leaves with a dusky blue outside, and then a kind of greeny yellow stripe down the middle. The one I have in this garden has clumped up really nicely, and it's a good example of those kind of smartly turned out hostas, a little bit like dinner jackets, that I also have in this garden somewhere as well. 
Finally, I have a variety called Sunset Grooves, and this is definitely one of my favorite hostas because it's the first variety that I bought back in 2019 at that Chelsea flower show. This one has rounded and cupped leaves with a flame yellow center surrounded by a wide green margin. It's a very vigorous one and the leaves have a nice substance to them so it should give good resistance to slugs and snails. This one can also take a lot of sun, even up to full sun. And if you want another hosta that can also take a lot of sun, Sun Power is a really good example and one that I've got in the front beds here. In terms of caring for my hostas, I don't do a huge amount. I know some people use things like garlic washes to try and keep the slugs and snails off the leaves, but I've never had too much of an issue. As you've seen in some of the varieties that I've featured, the ones with the thicker leaves and some of the darker leaf varieties have really good resistance to slugs and snails anyway. If I do struggle with any of my plants in that regard, it's normally the thinner leaved ones and the paler leaved ones too. One thing I do do is water all of the hostas that are in pots and I normally feed them with a liquid seaweed feed in spring and throughout the summer just to get as much energy into the plants as I can so that they clump up and grow over time. If you've enjoyed the video please give it a like and subscribe and I'd love to know your favourite hostas and the hostas that you're growing in your own garden. Until next time, thanks for watching and enjoy the wildlife in your garden.